comment. Now, nasty cold and flu season isn't great for many of us, but it helped RB post better than expected sales. The owner of brands including Dettol, Nurofen and Durex saw sales rise by 6% to just under £9 billion during 2015. Those flu products and strong demand for Strepsils and Gaviscon saw sales of health products rise by 14%. But RB, which was known as Reckitt Benkiza, warned that it expects to see that slow down during 2016. Well, despite that warning, RB shares were the biggest climber on the FTSE 100 today, up by just under 7% there at £63.71 pence a share. I spoke to the chief executive, Rakesh Kapoor, and asked what fueled growth in 2015. Well, we've seen broad-based growth across our healthcare portfolio, Gaviscon, Durex, Shoal, Neurofen, Strepsil. So, I mean, I can go on and describe our growth in all of these businesses. They've done well. But beyond health, I think we have a fantastic portfolio of hygiene brands like Dettol and Lysol, like Finish. These have grown very well, too, as indeed some of the home brands like Vanish and Avix. So I'm I'm rather pleased with our growth rate across the portfolio, but particularly the fact that you know, in many parts of the world, conditions remain quite difficult. We've managed to find a way of growing through innovation, through investing behind our brands and, and making sure that we could provide real uh, value for consumers and also, also, of course, in this whole process do well. Now, you've announced also that you're setting up a fund to help tackle the effects of the Zika virus. You're putting something like a million dollars into it. What was the thinking behind that? When the Zika virus happened, the first thing we asked ourselves is what is the role that we can play? And, and actually... It's not by accident that even in Brazil, where the virus first started, or at least was found out first, we found that we have a range of products, uh, like pest control products, the brand there is called SBP, it's called Mortine also in a number of other parts of the world, where we can actually provide safe ways of, of keeping themselves protected against insect bite, against the dengue, fever, you know, Aegis mosquito. The other thing we have also in, in Brazil is we have sexual well-being brands and there is an increasing concern whether some of this virus is getting transmitted through sexual intercourse. And we are making sure that people can have products that they can keep themselves safe, uh, you know, to have safe sex with. So we've, we said, well, actually, we have a natural role to play here. And shouldn't we go and find a way of educating people on how they can keep their daily lives, their families, their children protected against the Zika virus. So we've put together a range of experts, virology experts. We've created educational programs also with the help of our partners like Facebook. And we've created this educational program, taking it to 40 million people. So there is a substantial effort going around educating people on a daily basis on how they can prevent the Zika virus. Obviously, we have products to, to offer. So we are providing products to people. We've boosted our supply chain to make sure that we can actually make sure the products are available. And thirdly, for those people who are disadvantaged in terms of how much they can spend, we've offered free products. So there is a, so in total, we've, we've committed to $1 million uh, on the Zika uh, program. But more than that, we've also asked for other companies like ours to come and join us so that we can actually do our own bit, make a big difference. And beyond selling products, there's another role that companies like mine can play, and which is in times like this. We have a referendum coming up on the UK's EU membership. Is that keep keeping you awake at night? <laughs> no, it's not. And the reason is because it's probably keeping many other people awake at night, and, you know, I'd rather sleep better if I can, and I should. And the only thing I worry or I work on is things that I can influence. I really, Ian, despite my privileged position, I cannot influence the outcome of the UK vote on Brexit. What I can influence is whether my company can provide value for our people and our shareholders, and that's what I prefer.